Under the patronage of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, First Deputy Chairman, General Sports Authority Chairman, and Bahrain Olympic Committee President His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the main Bahrain Sports Day 2024 event was held at Bahrain Bay, which was organized by the GSA in cooperation with the Bahrain Sports for All Federation. His Highness Welk followed part of the activities, which included several sports and entertainment events, such as competitive sports games, interactive theater, the National Bank of Bahrain's Thara Challenge Competition, the Go with Talabat Competition, medical examinations, CrossFit, and 3x3 basketball competitions. In addition to the competitive running race and the Babco Energies walking event, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed pleasure with the large participation in the event, which, were, which has become one of the most important national occasions celebrated by athletes, citizens, and residents of the kingdom. He stressed the importance of Sports Day in spreading awareness of the benefit of sports on the quality of life and enhancing the health, the physical, and the psychological levels. His Highness noted that Bahrain Sports Day is a call for sports to be a lifestyle and to raise the awareness on the importance of physical activity for different groups and ages. He thanked all government agencies, private sector companies, and institutions that support and sponsor Bahrain Sports Day and the various federations and athletes participating in the event. In the presence of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Deputy Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee and member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the club organized today the 24th race of the season for Babco Energy's Horse Racing Cups at its race course in Ar Rafa Sakhir. The race saw the attendance of a number of their Highnesses, sponsors, representatives, and equestrian sport enthusiasts. Winners of the Cups were announced. 
and the Group Chief Executive Officer of Babco Energies. Mr. Mark Thomas presented the fourth and eighth round trophies to the winning trainer's assistant, Ishaq Murad, and the sixth round trophy to the winning owners, Hussein and Abbas Aqil, as well as the second round trophy to the winning trainer, Haider Ibrahim, and the first round trophy to the winning trainer, Hussein Adelami. Meanwhile, CEO of Babco Company, Dr. Abdurrahman Jawahri presented the third round trophy to His Highness Sheikh Hashim bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, the seventh round trophy to His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, while CEO of Babco Gas Company, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, presented the fifth round trophy to the winning jockey Lee Newman. Speaker of the Representative Council and Head of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Ahmed bin Salman al Musallam, met with the first Deputy Speaker of the Federal National Council of the United Arab Emirates, Dr. Tariq Humayd al Tayr, on the sideline of the 14th session of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly in Baku. Al Musallam highlighted the continuous development and ongoing cooperation across all domains with the framework of the deep-rooted Bahrain-UAE relations under the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, UAE President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Vice President Deputy Prime Minister Chairman of the Presidential Court, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The Speaker affirmed the commitment to parliamentary cooperation and bilateral work with the UAE Federal National Council led by Sagar Ubash and the coordination in regional and international parliamentary forums. And the Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed Al Musallam, delivered a speech at the 14th plenary session of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly in Azerbaijan. He affirmed that the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King places among its priorities the strengthening of the cooperation with the countries of the Asian group and opening broader horizons of cooperation in various tracks. He praised the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to formulate Bahrain's economic vision 2050 and evaluate what has been achieved of Bahrain's economic vision 2030. He stressed the importance of strengthening the regional cooperation for sustainable development in Asia and consolidating relations between member states. He also called on the necessity of a ceasefire in Gaza and providing the necessary aid to the brotherly Palestinian people. The Parliamentary Division delegation participated in the meetings of the Standing Committees concerned with political, social and cultural affairs in the Asian Parliamentary Assembly. The delegation affirmed that Bahraini women have achieved outstanding success as an important partner in the development process of the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. They also praised the efforts of the Supreme Council for Women, chaired by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women. They also stressed the Kingdom's firm position in support of the Palestinian cause and in support of all endeavors aimed at achieving a just and comprehensive peace in the region and ensuring the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state in accordance with a two-state solution. The Ministry of Social Development and the Ministry of Industry and Commerce organized various activities on the occasion of Bahrain Sports Day. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfur affirmed that the Sports Day reflects the interest of His Majesty the King in the sports sector, which is witnessing qualitative progress and achievements. The Minister of Industry 
and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, emphasized the youth and sports achievements made by the kingdom under the follow-up of His Royal Highness. The Crown Prince and Prime Minister comes as a result of the kingdom's commitment to the sports sector and athletes. The two ministers pointed out the importance of the Sports Day, which aims to enhance community awareness of the positive effects of exercising and following a healthy lifestyle. And the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning participated in the sports and health event organized in Salman City, marking Bahrain Sports Day. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed al ramehi affirmed that Bahrain's Sports Day reflects the government's keenness in promoting a healthier lifestyle supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She noted the Ministry's efforts to integrate elements of healthy living and sports into housing projects. And the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs and the Electricity and Water Authority participated in the activities of Bahrain Sports Day as part of the main event organized by the General Sports Authority in cooperation with the Bahrain Sports for All Federation in the Bahrain Bay Area. The celebration embodies the interest given to the sports sector in the Kingdom with the encouragement of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the support of His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The participation of the Ministry and the Authority included a number of sports recreational and awareness programs and activities. The Kingdom of Bahrain attaches a great importance to sustainable development through the continuous updating of legislation and laws. More details in this report. Political, economic and geopolitical challenges, all of which the Kingdom of Bahrain was able to overcome and move forward towards consolidating parliamentary, political and economic relations and cooperation in fulfillment of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to harness all national efforts to achieve progress and prosperity for the Kingdom, especially in the sustainable development field. This important file has enriched cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities through joint work within the framework of the principles and foundations of the pioneering democratic approach as the two authorities were able to update legislation and laws in accordance with the goals of sustainable development through research and adoption of agreements and enactment of legislation that supports sustainable economic growth, environmental protection and preservation, and supporting digital transformation and the green economy, all of which are aiming to reach the goal of zero carbon neutrality by 2060. The Kingdom of Bahrain has taken control of all issues affecting sustainable economic growth and has been able to solve them through national efforts that seek to create positive qualitative shift for the present and future of the Kingdom. The Bahrain Association of Banks welcomed the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to begin formulating Bahrain's Economic Vision 2050, which comes within the framework of ensuring that the vision reflects the ambitions and aspirations of society. The association praised the great achievements made within the framework of implementing Bahrain Vision 2030 in all economic fields, noting that the banking sector, thanks to the government's support and the directors of the Central Bank of Bahrain, contributed to achieving these accomplishments due to the important position it occupies in the economy and its main contribution to the GDP. The Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motor sport in the Middle East, concludes the official practice session for the 2024 FIA Formula One World Championship. Ferrari's Carlos Cianes took pole position on the second day of testing, while Max Verstappen topped the timesheet on day one. Lewis Hamilton, also testing for the whole day in Mercedes F1 W15 Challenger, came third overall. With these official tests, the countdown to the start of the Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix will take place from February 29th to March the 2nd. This year's race coincides with the 20th anniversary of the Kingdom of Bahrain hosting Formula One races. 20 years of making history is the name given to this year's race as the Bahrain International Circuit celebrates the 20th anniversary of hosting the Formula One races in Bahrain. This year's race also kicks off as the opening round in the new Formula One 2024 season calendar, consisting of 25 races on the FIA calendar. A few days separate us from the start of the 2024 Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix Formula One race, which is scheduled to be held from February 29th to March the 2nd. The circuit will witness other major international races and regional championships, most notably the first round of the Formula 2 and Formula 3 championships, in addition to the start of the fifth round of the Porsche Carrera Cup Challenge Middle East. 
The Bahrain International Circuit will launch a schedule full of family entertainment events, including touring bands, theatrical performances, carnival games, and much more that the whole family will enjoy throughout the three days in the entertainment district of the Bahrain International Circuit. Saudi Arabia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah, participated in the second session of the G20 foreign ministers meeting in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Delivering a speech titled Restructuring Global Governance, Prince Faisal stressed the importance of reforming it in order to make multilateral frameworks more effective, noting that the G20 is a vital platform for leading economies to enhance cooperation and better coordinate efforts to address pressing global issues. He also highlighted the opportunities to encourage more dialogue and cooperation at the global level and the need to restore trust and credibility in international organizations, demanding that this process work towards improving transparency, comprehensiveness, and equal application of international law so that key institutions such as the UN Security Council can be more effective in decision-making and addressing common challenges. An Emirati aid convoy has entered the Gaza Strip, this via the Egyptian Rafah crossing, as part of Gallant Night 3 humanitarian operation to support and relieve the Palestinian people during their current circumstances. The UAE convoy consists of 11 trucks carrying over 240 tons of humanitarian aid, including winter clothing, tents, family supplies, food items, and medical supplies. The UAE continues to provide humanitarian support to the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip, alleviate their suffering, and provide their basic needs. As of 20th February, the Emirati aid provided to the Palestinian people exceeded 15,809 tons through 165 cargo planes, two cargo ships, and 476 trucks dispatched. The number of cases received by the UAE field hospital inside Gaza reached 5,423. The UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Wensland, emphasized the urgent need for an agreement leading to a humanitarian ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. This came during the monthly session to discuss the situation in the Middle East. The UN official noted that the he will continue to urge all concerned parties to address the main obstacles to the UN's humanitarian response on the ground. He also emphasized the need for more safety measures, more security, more tools and more access points to expand aid, especially in the northern Gaza Strip. Once Lind added that he was deeply concerned about a possible full-scale Israeli military operation in the densely populated Rafah area, where some 1.4 million Palestinians are sheltering and is the only point of entry of humanitarian goods. <laughs> 